is a forte? A forte is a thing at which someone excels in. A person's strong suit, most highly developed characteristic, talent or skill. My forte covers stories that symbolically inspires passion, personal fulfillment and ambition. Thank you. Hello. I'm fine. Thank you. Uh, nice <laughs> to meet you. Lovely to meet you. Can you please introduce yourself to everyone yes, in our audience who do not know who you are? Okay. Um, I am, my name is Claudie Tete Dimbang. Uh, I'm often called Dimbang okay. as an artist and uh, I'm also called Claudie. Claudie. That was catchy. <laughs> so where does Cody reside? Where did Cody Ray like grew up? Okay, I was born in uh, Cote d'Ivoire in Abidjan, 1968, and uh, I have lived uh, in Germany, in Austria, because of my uh, father's uh, cause de... <laughs> okay. Don't worry. He's a busy man. Takes your life. Yeah. <laughs> okay. No, okay. No, don't worry. Yeah. Don't worry. Yeah, it's good though, at least now you know Austria, now you know Germany, now you know Paris. Mm. Some of us only know South Africa. Yeah, so uh, I lived there, I was in Austria until the end of high school, and uh, then I moved to Paris to study. Mm. Yes, because you, you moved in 1986. Uh, 86, yes. exactly. And um, so I was supposed to study economics, <laughs> and uh, I didn't like it at all because Is it? actually it wasn't what I mm. liked. Um, so I switched to uh, one year in art school, and then I studied interior design. Okay. Mm. Only in yep. architecture. Yes. How is it different from interior design? Uh, for me, it's the same. Actually, it's architecture, but from inside. inside. So, you know, so you can. Yep. Okay. You, are, so you also draw plans and mm. you also make perspectives and. Okay. Uh, yeah. But it's very complete because you can also design furniture, so you can also design textile. Mm. Um, so it doesn't limit you? No, it's quite, it's quite so. That's interesting. I always thought someone who designed the building exterior does the interior also. Um, maybe, yes, you can, but uh, you have this uh, specialization for mm. interior architecture. No. And how long did you do that before tapping into Actually, visual I arts painting? Uh, four years and um, I did that just like that because I really wanted to do fine arts but it was tricky. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 So, yeah. It's like when you say I like to jump, I like you want to act. <laughs> yeah. 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 And did, how did like, the family take that? Because we also love to know in terms of like family. Mm -hmm. Your home, did they accept or like were they encouraging in terms of the arts turning into that line of work? Uh, my family, my husband and my children are very supportive. Uh, actually, I started painting thanks to my husband because uh, when we met, he asked me where I saw myself mm. in 10 years and when we talked, he realized that I realized that I didn't like to to, to work in architecture. architecture. So um, and he uh, saw immediately, immediately that I was interested in, in finance. So he said, "Why don't you do it? Just mm. do it." Mm. And uh, that's how I started, 1999, and officially. 2002 with the first exhibition in Paris and uh, then I didn't stop. So this is history. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I'm telling you, so let's start off with the collection Back to the Future. Okay. Can you like, t like how to pronounce it in French? Retour vers le futur. 
Roto Roto vers futur. Roto vers futur. Oui. Okay. So I would have beaten my time. <laughs> yeah. The Roto vers le futur was um, a series that I did uh, in hmm. 2013 for my first exhibition in my home country, Côte d'Ivoire. It was with the uh, Gallery Art Pluriel, uh, founded by uh, Madame Simone Girandou. And, uh, she, this gallery is now Gary Louis Simon Rondou, that mm. she found it uh, with her uh, daughter, Gazelle. And uh, now I'm working with this gallery. Mm. Uh, so I did this work for me, it was about uh, back to source. Um, it was about this uh, um, icon philosophy about Sankofa, you know. Uh, go get to know your past to understand your present and build your future. Yeah. So um, it was about that. It was about um, Bambara uh, cosmogony. Uh, it was about African philosophy, uh, African spirituality. Uh, yes. So I did this uh, series uh, specially for that. And how did um, the native people, your people, yes? Mm -hmm receive the work when you first um, showcased it in your native country? Very well, very well. It was very uh, successful. They liked the work a lot and also they liked the fact that I could talk about it, explain what uh, I was uh, painting, why, what was the story behind it. Mm. They liked also the technique, the colors. Um, my technique is uh, mixed art relief. It's inspired by Volvo, which is an Iberian movement. It was uh, like a special painting technique. Exactly. It was born in the fine art school at Ecole des Beaux Arts de Dijon in the 70s. Mm. And um, it's a special technique with, with it's mixed media, actually. You use uh, organic material? Yes, and uh, raw materials and uh, uh, natural materials. Um, yes. So? Pata. Pata, what is this? Uh, uh, is it Pata? Pata, I'm saying. Pata, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes, we need Pata, uh, which is a uh, tree bark. Oh, okay. And uh, that I use, so uh, uh, tree bark and uh, raffia. Okay. That I use uh, as a technique uh, because this is uh, a link to my culture, to my mm. background, my algorithm. Mm. And uh, I also use uh, coating, and that makes the, the specific texture uh, for my work. Okay. That is, I am very interested in to back to the future. Mm -hmm. mm. It's the chosen place for you. It's your first solo exhibition at home at the cost of your body when you grew up. Mm. And you could have used any other name, you could have said. Back home, we could have said, oh, take it home. Take it home, but mm. you said back to the future. Do you believe that's where the future is? Yeah, of course. <laughs> <laughs> of course, Africa is the future, Africa is the present, Africa is the future. Yes. Uh, so, yes, it was a way of um, paying tribute to my home country, paying tribute to Africa, mm. uh, the continent of Africa. As a whole. Yes. Mm. 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 So tell me, 2015, you have your first residency. Yes. yes. Uh, at La Palanga. La Palanga. It was Palanga in Lithuania. Mm. Uh, one, month, uh, one month residency. And uh, we were uh, 12 artists from around the world. Mm. Uh, United States, uh, uh, Baltic countries. Um, uh, India, Norway, okay. countries, and um, so we gathered there, and uh, it was, uh, that year it was uh, uh, L'Année Internationale de Lumière. Oh, what does that mean? What does that mean? It was an international uh, last year um, from uh, the UN, that the UN decided to to mm. be for this year. Okay. Uh, the 
de la lumière et des techniques utilisant la lumière. Light and techniques using light. So we were supposed to create uh, around light. Mm. And uh, we were in a residency uh, between the Baltic Sea and uh, the woods. Yeah. Uh, so I was very much inspired by, by the nature, by the mm. environment. So did you have to make something with what you had in where you were? Uh, yes, we, could, we were very free to produce what we wanted, but according to our technique, mm. our way of um, working. And uh, but I brought my material. Okay. okay. And uh, is because the that's mm. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I had to to put my to put me in this work. Yeah. Know? Yeah. Um, to put me, to put my origin, to put uh, Miss Art Relief, to put... Uh, so, um, I uh, produced three works there. Mm. And uh, one of them was very different from everything that I've ever done since. It In what man? a unique... <laughs> <laughs> that's a, that's mm. Please, uh, please! Uh, okay, yeah, mm. it's, it's uh, very abstract. Okay. Completely abstract because my work is really between figuration and abstraction. And uh, mm. this one was uh, very special. Actually, I was struggling, you know, because it was my first residency. I wasn't used to uh, work or paint in front of okay. people except for my family, my husband, and my children. Mm. And, uh, so it was very, very difficult at the beginning. So. Um, at what point I, I called my mentor, which is a Spanish pa uh, painter uh, living in Paris, and I uh, said, I uh, told him, I, I don't, I don't manage, I, can, I cannot do this, what can I do? <laughs> so just, just let it go, just be free. Mm. And uh, that was the, the kick. And uh, yes, I did this work, which is very, uh, which has very much contrast. Mm. It's very dark and very bright. Okay. <laughs> so, and there are some few spots of lights. Mm. It's called uh, entre les between between the lines. Okay. So between the lines, it's uh, a work uh, between water, sea, and wood. And it's also uh, um, uh, linked to knowledge, like a resource, uh, that you can um, get to, to, to know, to reach, through uh, research and mm -hmm. so on. So, because the light is also linked to uh, knowledge. Yep. Yes. Yep. And you can use light differently. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you can give it to any form or shape, just like water, depending on what you want to get. That's true. Mm -hmm. I have, you have another one? <coughs> you, I have this um, saying for you. You say, I consider myself a citizen <coughs> of the world. Mm -hmm. Is it not the principle of universality? Universality, sorry about that, universality that prevails, bringing us back to the one and only essence of our being, mm -hmm. humanity. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, it's, yes only. it's a very powerful statement. Yes, because uh, people are talking about race, about race issue, but actually there, there is only one race, the human race. Mm. You know, so uh, that's why I say that. And when you consider that all the continents were linked, it was Pangea at the beginning. It was one continent. So mm. we all come from one continent. Mm. So um, yes, this is our essence, and this is what unites us all. Mm. No matter the, the color, no matter the continent, the country. Yep. So you am I right by saying you don't see color, you don't see gender, you don't see race? No, I see human beings. 
is you don't define all the time that a lady or you are white, you are black, you are Indian. I mean, you are just a human being. We are human beings, of course. We, you are South African, I am from Ivory Coast, from yes. Cote d'Ivoire, mm. from North America. Yes, but this is not what defines us yep. at the beginning. Yep. You know? yep. Yeah. Of course, we have uh, uh, specific cultures, values, mm. yeah. values, but actually, when you really think about it, uh, the values, the human values, Oh, I think common everywhere. And, and it's the same. You, you're not supposed to kill uh, someone, yeah. you're not supposed to hurt someone, mm. you know, so... I think maybe, yeah, my partner is trying to refer us to, yes, you acknowledge, you know, the gender, the race, because at the end of the game, when we step into a room, of course, they're going to see we're Africans. Yes, of course. And you know, yes. and we're all Africans. We mm. are black, African, are you... Yeah, that's it. Indian, but mm. this is part of what you're saying, and I'm hoping that maybe everyone can learn and have this kind of mindset, because that's where apartheid comes from, because they so yeah, they so color. That's where discrimination comes from, because now we see your color, they check your background, where you come from, your nation, of which those are things you can take away from the society. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and you should treat each other as you being regardless. True, true. There are so many killings also. Yeah. It's, it's, it's bad. So racism is, is a social construction, so mm. it's from the, mm. the I have to say, I love the jacket. <laughs> Thank you. I love the jacket. I love it too. I love the jacket. I love the jacket. I love the jacket. I love the jacket. I love the Compliments the necklace, everything. Yeah, this is what we're going to say. Mm. And then we're also going to wear the leather jackets. Oh, yes. Nice. Because mm -hmm. it's like a pattern of Kosa culture, the necklace. The necklace, yes, it's very much like. Look at the Kosa culture pattern, it's really similar to it. So, like, wow. Yeah, it's, 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 no, it's uh, an inspiration. Mm, you know, because we won. We won, like we won, we always think the same and there's different patterns and we're so broad as a nation, you know. So it's like actually a lot of stuff. Like when you are visiting our country South Africa mm -hmm. and you are experimenting buying our own production, mm -hmm. such necklaces, like celebrating South African cultures. And it's so nice that people are accepting and they are looking forward, whereas I am, they're looking forward to giving you the best in South Africa can. Mm -hmm. Instead, you go to a country and then because you're not from here, you treat you a certain way now. Yeah, now. It's, 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 I think the way people treat you and the way people treat uh, black persons, particularly, is very linked to uh, the fact that uh, Africa is considered as the poorest continent. You know, mm. um, a few years uh, ago, uh, people didn't consider China, but today China is the first, yeah, mm -hmm. the first uh, uh, economic power. So people have another consideration for Chinese persons, yeah. Chinese people, and uh, it's like that. You know, um, I think when Africa will be industrialized like other people, other countries, mm -hmm. other continents, sorry, and uh, <clears throat> that it will be a, a really rich continent. Because it is. Uh, yes, in resources, but it is not in, in fact, you know. So, um, mm -hmm. people will have a different uh, gaze on uh, the continent and on African people. Mm -hmm. It's like that, yes. you know. Uh, in, in France, uh, they say that uh, uh, crim criminality uh, is linked to uh, uh, black persons and uh, uh, North American Arabic persons. Mm. But it's a question of backgrounds, 
because they are the ones who are put aside and they are the ones who are have to, to struggle. So we, uh, it's the part of the population which is the poorest. So yeah, poorest. yeah. Yeah, but in the end, it was uh, Italians, it was uh, yep. uh, people from Poland. Uh, yeah, true. So it's not a question of color, it's not a question of... Uh, it matters also... It's, it's a question of social background. Yeah. yeah. Uh, which possibility you have to... Yep, and sustain. Like, I just want to cast a quick question on that note of even like us as Africans being able to make art <coughs> and make art as a profession and being able to sustain ourselves and grow mm -hmm. creatively and grow financially the capital and be able to pay it forward to those that are also coming after us, you know. So even now my question would be in terms of now, once you decided that, okay, this is the profession that actually is keeping me alive, because where you were at, it wasn't really the soul, the spirit wasn't there, you know, in the architecture side. You know, you had served that phase of your stage of life, you know, in career. So I want to know, like, how long did it take you once you shifted to this side of where you're at now, the painting, and the side that actually is keeping you alive in spirit? How was it in terms of finance? Were you able to immediately sustain yourself? being able to create more canvas, yeah. How was that process? We'd love to know that process. Uh, actually, uh, being an artist is uh, um, very difficult uh, métier. Uh, and that is everywhere in the world, you know. But as an artist, you have no choice. It's in your blood, it's in your whole body. You cannot live without creating, you cannot live without doing art. So, uh, uh, art is, uh, you know, art in itself is it's an act of resistance, like uh, uh, André Malraux said. It, it resists death and it's in itself is an act of resistance. Mm. So, um, yes, it's, it's difficult at the beginning, but uh, you have to, to go further and you have to, to try and find some solutions and uh, as soon as you are in your art, you know, my husband always says, uh, once I'm painting, I forget to, to eat, I forget to... Mm. You know, once, yeah, once you are in, in your art, uh, I, say, I, I won't say nothing else matters, but uh, it's, uh, that strives your life. You know, so, mm. You find solutions. <laughs> yeah, I'm glad. I'm glad. Mm. Uh, since you've been in Cape Town, you've been 18 years old, so you um, moved to Paris. So, how is the creative or art exhibitions that site is art uh, taken seriously? As I know, some other countries are still fighting for that, for art to be taken seriously. Some countries where well, like South Africa we know you let me say where you find art and it's being embraced and it's being shown it's Cape Town and Johannesburg. Mm -hmm. We know those are the two areas where if you want to succeed as an artist that you want to school mm -hmm. and you know also if you love of arts that you want to school. As we had an arts first, Cape Art First and Invest, Cape yes. Art first, Again, and we had the Engraving in, in Your Body and Part of Your Body exhibition here in at Body Aspire. Yeah. Is it the Aspire Gallery? Yes. I just want you to give me a brief of how does it look that sound in Paris. I'm, I'm thinking it's not that since you are here. <laughs> so you were able to connect with the people you needed to connect with. You were able to showcase your work and is there something we're lacking? Mm. That so you really like we love her, we love her way. Mm. Please come with the um exhibiting in my country. So do you have some collaborations to our days? Mm -hmm. Uh yes, we today we live in a in a global world mm. and uh, we have the social media also mm. and you 
uh, we have many connections mm -hmm. and um, so I had uh, the opportunity to get uh, to meet my gallerist uh, uh, the Baker, Rosa Baker and uh, we've been working together since last year mm. uh, she has a gallery on Artsy so naturally she uh, wanted me to be in this show mm. and uh, I, uh, Zanelli, Molly and her went to Paris and I was there for a big show at the Met mm. uh, Maison Open de la Photographie which is uh, the European House of Photography in Paris. Mm. She has a big show there, and so they came to my uh, studio to see that the work, the, the, the works. Mm. And uh, yes, I was very happy to join this uh, exhibition because it's about women, it's about uh, um, uh, gender, it's about uh, defining oneself, it's about acceptance, it's, uh, it's about. Uh, um, loving oneself, um, so it embraces many aspects of life mm. um, that are very important to me. Just a quick one while we're at that, mm. I'd like to also understand like how is the woman perceived in your native country, home? Mm -hmm. Especially with your work because your work really like focuses on women and spirituality and on pleasure, you know? <coughs> so this uh, particular series um, was a collaboration with uh, sociologist and artist mm -hmm. uh, Nefta Poetry. Uh, with the, it was a project called Revolution. Revow. Revow. Okay. You know, wish. Revolution. Mm. Uh, and um, it was uh, about inviting women to talk about their body, their sexuality, and uh, so we invited them, uh, organized some brunches, uh, to have yeah. a, a safe space to speak and talk, and um, then I uh, painted out of their testimonies. Okay. So this uh, work is uh, long there. Okay. which can be translated as reverse. Okay. Uh, and it's about uh, being shy, it's about uh, not knowing uh, one, one's body, uh, not knowing uh, uh, one's own sexuality. And uh, you know that it is very much textured, much more than the others, because it's a very uh, tricky, very difficult. And uh, it needs uh, exploration, it needs uh, knowledge. This piece is called We, so it's about consent. It's about uh, uh, to the other, uh, it's about uh, sexuality, and uh, it's also about love. Uh, so, uh, this is Coulé. I don't know how to translate Coulé. It's something that um, and um, it's it's uh, from the shape of this work. Uh, I started with this shape, uh, and it's an exception because usually I don't start with it. Yes, <laughs> yes, uh, I, I like this one also a lot. It's uh, je suis femme, je suis femme, uh, okay. and femme is like you know. Uh, uh, like, a, like a name, so, uh, I am a woman, it's like, a, a, like a, yeah, it's a statement actually, I am a woman, I am woman, my name is woman, yeah. yes, I mean, uh, I know who I am, I accept myself, I, I don't have any issues mm -hmm. with my body or my being or whatever. I'm free. Take me with me. Up to you. <laughs> yeah, you know, I'm not going to shrink now. Yes, and uh, I accept my body, I accept my sexuality, I accept, uh, yes, I, I know, I know who I am. By your applications, well, if you're, if you're an author, I would say your book has been published. But as an artist, does it mean you've 
which an article, what does it mean when they say this uh, article is a publication from where and where and where? Because I see we have, we have the recent one, we have the recent one, it's uh, with Arts at Philosophy, Canet One, Chef de Vaux, Mystery de la Creation, and the same with Rise. Mm -hmm. Uh, yes, art and philosophy. Yes, um, I am part of uh, the Conseil National des Arts Plastiques, which is a French association, and we have many uh, art talk, uh, philosophy and art, and uh, so uh, we sometimes. Uh, uh, this was the first book uh, from this talks. It, yes, it was the first book from these talks, Art and Philo, and uh, yes, one of my work really is to uh, illustrate uh, one of the one of the topics. Mm. Oh, there is this one. Oh, my God, she's like, wow. Yeah. There's so many publications. <laughs> oh, my God, from 2021, 2019, 2016. There was also this uh, talk race review which is uh, from the uh, which means actually a mixing you know? mm. and uh, it's a cultural and artistic uh, literature review and also literature okay so there was also a, a a text by Nefta Poetry from the Czech Revolution Project and uh, one of the works were mm. also on this, in this uh, review. Mm. Mm. I want to know, five years ago, did you see yourself here? The first time I came in South Africa was in 2009. Mm. And uh, it was very special because the day I left, uh, we were on our way, uh, on our way to the, the airport mm. in the car, and I felt something in my body, uh, in my heart. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And uh, I knew that I would come back. Mm. Mm. It, it was. It's was just like uh, if uh, I, I was uh, if I belong to this country. Mm. But at that time, it had not, nothing to do with the uh, art. Okay. It was really it's just a regular visit. Yes, it the was really, yes. <laughs> <laughs> but, but the feeling, I mean, it had nothing to do with I want to uh, yeah. visit here. It was, it was just that. Just what you felt when you in the city of And uh, then I came back in between 2010 and 2014. I worked for uh, two years for essay tourism in France because they wanted to organize okay. a huge uh, traveling exhibition in France with the uh, South African mm. contemporary artists. So, mm. so I was in South Africa. I was really, no, 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 I went for Pierre Cross and mm. Paul, and uh, I visited the whole country, met with galleries, with artists like mm. uh, uh, Nancy Pantango, like Laurence um, uh, de Ramona, like uh, Mary Sibande, mm. a lot of artists really, and uh, visited some museums, uh, Olive Noise Museum. Yeah. Uh, yeah, wow! Wow! Yes! And yes, and in 2011, uh, President Zuma and Sarkozy decided to have this uh, cross season that France organizes uh, each mm -hmm. every year or every two years between two countries. Mm -hmm. Okay. So it's it's um, an exchange, uh, cultural, economic. Uh, so that mainly focus on Europe and Africa. That partnership. Yeah, it's it's with a country. Uh, and, and, uh, so 2012 and 13 were France, South Africa, and South Africa, France. So mm. uh, many um, events are organized in one country and another. Wow. 
Okay. So, uh, um, it's very clear. Mm. So yes. So the the, the um, a few uh, articles I selected for essay tourism were uh, uh, selected by the French Institute for mm -hmm. uh, organizing a project because of this uh, process. Mm. It's a great way to merge countries and artists, you know, together. Spirituality mm -hmm. and um, especially the Akan uh, sacred group in uh, the Sandy Kingdom, which is in Cote d'Ivoire. And you know, in uh, for the Akan people, um, there is one God which is both uh, man and woman. Mm -hmm. Yam -yam. And uh, oh, it's it's one like a, that one God is one God of Christian. Yes. It's and it's like called it's nyam nyam. Nyam nyam. It's yes. like a, a twin god, okay. you know, mm. both man and woman. And he's uh, associated with the, the earth, which is Asya. Uh, and he, this god has um, uh, spirits that are called Boson. Mm. And uh, the priestess and priest uh, which are Komyon, are um, ridden by these bosoms. Okay. Uh, so they de deliver some uh, messages mm. uh, when they are ridden. It's when they have a, a special ceremony. And they also, the Komyon also have the knowledge of plants, uh, the knowledge of history uh, of the clan. Mm. Uh, so they, they are very uh, respected. It's, it's a little bit lost today, but before it was very, very uh, strong in the tradition. Mm. Um, mm. So, and the Konya were also uh, responsible for the education, uh, for the initiation of a uh, uh, young person. Mm. Uh, so this uh, was done in the sacred uh, forest, uh, different initiation mm. with different ages, and you also have it here. I mean, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was about to say sounds like the initiation with mm, ceremony. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Yes, 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 yes. yes. Yeah. Actually, initiation for uh, African people in the tradition is like school because you get to know uh, how to carry yourself, how to carry a character. Yourself, yes, how to mm. build a house, how mm. to cook, how to, uh, you know, everything. And it's also it's sexuality is, uh, uh, is taught. Can we click on that? Yep. Yeah. The presentation really just scrapes the surface, guys. It scrapes the surface because, again, you see, that's why I wanted to add people. The reason even why we chose you. <laughs> 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 you know, it's, 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 
exactly, but you are like, nah. The connection was there, and everything that you are about, it really drawed us to you. Mm -hmm. You know, that's what we believe, and we are very spiritual beings, mm -hmm. you know, and we believe very much, and we, we're learning and unlearning, both of us, like our sexuality and who we are, and exploring, mm -hmm. you know, that side, you know? Exactly, that, that was, uh, it was also about that, about knowing yourself, about knowing your body, knowing uh, uh, your sex, your vagina, mm. you know that, uh, uh, do you know that the clitoris is Different the shapes. only human organ, only dedicated, exclusively dedicated to pleasure. Is it on a <laughs> Moment of silence, so that's amazing, amazing, yes, and the clitoris. It's like the only one job in home with it. <laughs> And uh, some artists uh, started to, to work with it and make some sculpture, I forgot the names, sorry. Mm -hmm. But uh, the clitoris is not only this small button that you can see, you know, it's a shape like that. Yep, like it's that. a flower. Yeah, it's, it's, it's very big actually. And uh, different sizes. Yes. So yep, that's that's it's, a, it's just that. Uh, <laughs> so it, it's, it's something that... Uh, wasn't uh, taught at school. Mm. It's something that was taught by the Quran, by the tradition, you know? Oh, I understand this, this, this mm. right. Yes. Uh, yeah, yeah. Let yeah. dive deep into, you said, it's, 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 it's interesting when you look at it. Mm. Mm. We have life orientation as a subject in school from primary till varsity, until you finish. Yeah, till yeah, the trick. That's where you learn about a human body, mm. you learn the different parts of a human body and its functions. Mm. That's where you actually learn anything sexual. And when you, when it's the first time you are being given those pictures, we laugh because we're kids. Mm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it, you only just learn that in school, and school they can give you everything to detail, they can tell you, okay, if you're feeling like this now, mm. it's because of this and that your body, this what's happening to your body, mm. this is what you should do. And yes, this, mm -hmm. but you know, school has a, a function, mm. and the curriculum parents has, have also a function, yes. you know, yes. and yes. True. Uh, mothers and fathers too, or community. Yes. 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 about their body. Yes, because uh, you know in France, the statistics uh, say that children from 11 or 10 have all seen uh, a, porn, a porn film. Yeah. Because it's so accessible now. Mm. And I'm talking about that, about that, it was so, uh, ten, ten, year, 10 years ago, mm. because my children have... Uh, 23, 25. Okay. How are you? So, you know, and, uh, um, yes, yeah, so we, we, we talked with them. Mm. Uh, uh, after primary school. Mm. And, uh, oh, after yes. yes, 11. Yeah, it's we don't get it. We, we, got, we don't get that. Uh, is it? Okay, for so some uh, things, some parents in South Africa, I don't know if it's their car, it's cultural thing. They are very close off when it comes to. Mm. So that's that's why uh, we also have the community. You have the aunties. You have mm. people, you have cousins. Mm. Uh, you have you you can. But there is a problem. If your mother or your father didn't tell you anything and then you are hearing it now from outside. Now, you don't know how much of it is true, how much of it is something that you are being fed, you are being fed, yes. you don't really know. So, that's why I would say it's better you hear from your parent than someone outside. Yes, of course, but not it's all different. parents are ready also to talk to them. Uh, and not all parents are not alive to do that, you yeah. know? Yeah. Uh, so yes, that's why I say 
when, when I say you go to an auntie, a cousin, mm. you go to someone who is uh, close to mm, you. You can express. Uh, yeah, no, not uh, just mm. anyone. Mm. Just mm. Uh, mm. Someone who is uh, who have experience and uh, who is um, caring for you. Yeah. You know, it's very important. La bienveillance is, is essential. Mm. Uh, and you also have um, uh, today, yes, you have social media, but yeah. you, you have to know what to search, yep. how to search, and when you're young, you don't know. Mm. So mm. that's why I, um, I'm saying that it's better to go to someone caring, you know, mm. someone you can trust, and yeah. trust mm. Someone with the wisdom that you need. Yes. And open-mindedness. Yeah. Of course. Because just also just get your insights, maybe advice. Like well, especially for like our parents, you know, and yes. for us. Yes. Yeah, like advice just to also like parents actually listen to your kids. You know, like you know what? Sometimes your kid is not gonna come with a boyfriend, will come with a girlfriend. Mm -hmm. You get what I'm saying? And like that thing being open and just encourage even if it's at a very young age. Mm -hmm. Because yeah, we are shocked, but actually when a child actually asks a question, they're ready to hear and understand, yes, you know? Yes, because they hear things outside with other children or so. It's mm. just the same uh, with the drug problem. You have to talk about it very, at a very young age. Mm -hmm. uh, it doesn't mean that uh, you're, you're, you're saying that they, they will have sex. Uh, yeah. Away, but you're explaining and teaching that it's like that. Confine is Yep. Uh, yes, exactly. Mm. Uh, yes, uh, having sex is a bit about uh, two uh, people. Consent, yep. Yeah. Etc. Et and you're just telling not now my baby has to be very And <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, 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 you know. Mm. And, uh, so, yeah, that, that, that's, that's important. But it, it's called actually, it, there is a big difference between what uh, you learn at school, which is uh, uh, sexual education, mm -hmm. and what you learn with your uh, relatives, uh, parents, which is sentimental education. Mm. It's not the same. Mm. Uh, parents can do both, mm. or parents can do the sentimental education because it's also important mm. okay there is sex there is also the the, the feelings yes. uh, so you can have one and you can have both mm. so uh, school has a function and parents and home a function. also a function mm. indeed one more and we can see this topic <laughs> <laughs> yeah because i really am yeah, I don't, I don't say it's a passion, but I really am fond of like sexual knowledge and being able to know my body because I'm still also learning a lot about my body. Yes, of course, and uh, you always learn, and it's also also between between you from the same age, you can you know organize some some branches and talk to another, talk with mm. one another, and exchange. Information. Information. Uh, mm. So, yes. Yeah, honestly. And one more, one more. <laughs> one more, and then we can close this, yeah, this topic. Yeah, because I, I just want to just get a brief understanding of home when you grow up and the, the need to actually educate young girls. Like, is it also similar to the same challenges that we're also going through this side of the world in terms of very limited information about ourselves as young girls compared to, because we know as young boys, you know, when we grow up with our siblings who are boys, they are also encouraged to explore themselves, you know, and we, we say like there's limits for us, you know, and I understand that it's also it's so great that there is a limit because at the end of the day, for me, I won't say I regret none of how I was raised. And by the you know, they know their characters because they've been characters. Mm. Characters what you have. Yeah. 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 Mm. yeah. Well, because I am the person I am because of my grandmother and my mother. Because I came from a very matriarchal.
safe an environment, you know. So definitely that I wanted to just to understand like is are we also in the same mission of this education in terms of your home country, you know? I think so. I think it's the same uh, in Cote d'Ivoire. Mm. I think it's the same in France because you don't have sentimental education anymore and you don't have uh, sex education anymore. There is a, uh, a certain There is a series on uh, Netflix. Uh, sex education. education. <laughs> and you see that there is a need for that. Yep. Uh, there, there were. Um, uh, feminist fights, uh, there, there was the, the uh, sexual uh, liberation mm -hmm. in the 60s. Okay, but now something is missing. Yeah. And this uh, um, uh, education is missing. Mm -hmm. yes. And it's very important. Yeah. Because now we literally are trying to find a solution for something that's already happening, whereas we need the root cause of it, you know? You end up going to the internet to find this. Yeah. And then that's where you find the diluted versions of things. Mm. You find the manipulated versions of mm. things. And that's why we have to, to, to go back to our ancient values mm. and uh, ancient uh, way of uh, doing ancient traditions, uh, which uh, give you the opportunity to learn about your body, your sexuality. Yeah. Like I say, with the Kremlin in the Akan uh, tradition, mm. uh, where, where the ones who, who taught uh, the young girls, young boys, and so on, uh, the, the persons of the, the community, mm. and uh, <laughs> they knew all the secrets. So <laughs> and they passed on an entire institute, because sometimes, like, our great-grandmothers, they are an entire institute of knowledge. Definitely. And you know, it's not passed on, yes. you know. And uh, I think uh, um, the, the the problem is more uh, prominent uh, in the in the cities, in the urban space, mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. you don't have this uh, this link anymore. Mm -hmm. you know? So uh, it's important to to recreate it and to. To get back to our values, to our tradition, to our own spirituality, African spirituality, which is uh, the cult of ancestors. This is the real uh, African Renaissance. You know, it, it has to go through this to our own spirituality. Every country uh, in the world has its is it has its own mm. spirituality. Mm. And uh, yes, we need to have our own. Okay. In closing, I want to know where you see, where do you see yourself in the next five years and when you are no more, how would you like the world to remember you? Well, where do I see myself, uh, where I see myself in Africa? to be in African museums, uh, in Côte d'Ivoire, in Senegal, uh, in, uh, in Morocco, South Africa, because uh, African uh, uh, children or mm. person need to see uh, what the artists have to say. And uh, it's uh, good that we have more and more museums, more and more fairs, mm. uh, like uh, like uh, yep. uh, yes. the like Artex Lagos, like you know, hmm. uh, like uh, 1.54, of course, in uh, Morocco and uh, Paris, New York, London. Hmm. So the the, the um, African contemporary art market is growing, uh, and it's a good thing. It's hmm. very good because uh, African artists have more and more um, audience yep. abroad, but also in ourselves, yes? Yes, and that's very important. Mm. Mm. And how would you like the world to be? As an artist, 
<laughs> I mean, I'm an artist, she's an artist. Yeah. Yes, I mean, I'm an artist who um, who deals with the uh, current issues uh, such as uh, migration, death of migrants in the Indo-Mediterranean Sea, uh, like um, the death of George Floyd, that mm. opened up the, the, the conversation mm. globally. Police violence. You know, yeah. police violence. Yeah. It's not only in the United yeah. States, it's also in yeah. France, it's also in here, Europe. Africa. Um, but, you know, I'm talking about uh, systemic racism. Yeah. You know? Uh, and also about, uh, of course, the, the, the body, the body, sexuality, yeah. uh, and about all African spirituality. Yeah. Okay, yeah. thank you very much for coming. So now I thank you for the invitation. It was very thank you for your time. Appreciate it. <laughs> Thank you for this. <laughs> Appreciate it. <laughs>